everyone, thanks so much for joining me. In this video, we're gonna cover cow face pose or gomukhasana. It is a fantastic posture for the hips, for the shoulders. It has a ton of variations, and I'll try to just visit some of those to give you options. As with all other seated poses, you might need some props. Okay, so um, a blanket, a block or two, a strap, and then just uh, a willing spirit, honestly, to um, explore because, like I said, this has a lot of options. So we'll go ahead and head back. Um, the first thing is, sorry, <laughs> that um, the entry can be awkward, okay? So a lot of the time I'll um, enter it and instruct it from downward facing dog. So I'm just gonna give you an idea of where this goes. So from down dog, one knee goes forward, okay, and the foot goes um, toward that edge of the mat. And then the other, as you go forward, the other knee goes behind it. So you're creating this um, gap between the feet. A lot of the time when people come into this, they tend to swing toward one side, and you're really trying to go back centered in between the feet. Hence why you might want a block or two or blanket rolled up. You know, something that will make this possible. So I just wanna do it from behind, okay, just to give you the view. So the feet are out to the sides. And like I said, the seat's gonna wanna um, veer, or for, for many bodies, they'll wanna veer, okay? So trying to sit in between and tuck the feet in may or may not be possible, okay, for your body. So you really want to, um, just kind of test things out, either from all fours or from downward facing dog, and just see, will one knee go directly behind the other? Will the feet um, go out to the sides? And then to what degree, because then the knees are stacked, okay? To what degree can you sit back? That's A way. Okay, the other, um, I'm just gonna show is a single leg option. So if you're entering it from more of um, a seated position rather than all fours or down dog, then the extended leg crosses the midline, the other knee goes on top, and still you're stacking the knees, okay? And still you're going to get the benefit of, it provides a lot of hip stability as you explore maybe a hinge, maybe a twist, maybe more of options with the, um, with the arms. Okay, so first thing is just figuring out what can you do? You know, what's available to you for your hips and knees? What's the right positioning for your feet? I'm gonna take single leg option or, and another way of getting into this is shifting to the side, bending the knee and just bringing your heels in towards your body. So this position, okay, for some people, extremely easy to enter, no big deal. They don't even have to think about it. For others, it's, <laughs> it's a, a chore. So you really wanna make sure that when you're in the position, like all other positions, okay, that it makes sense to you, that you can feel how, okay, I can get space, all right, my, my legs feel good, I have space in my hips, I can create length in my spine and explore. Sometimes I do this pose just in the lower half of the body because it really, feels like such a great anchoring, and I can get really nice twists in this, okay? Because the hips aren't going to be traveling, okay? They, they're really nice and still, which is nice because then it gives you a sense of anchoring and then going into the twist. Okay, usually you'll twist toward the top leg. You can stay upright, you can hinge. There are, like I said, there's a ton of variations. Okay, so you can come into prayer, extend, wrap, Okay, all kinds of things. So this, the, for me, for my body, the lower half is a lot more accessible than the upper half, okay? So I forgot to keep it handy here, but a strap for the shoulders. Okay, so I'm gonna come out of the lower half just to be able to show, okay, what to do for your um, upper body. So with the shoulders, the idea is here that the hands are gonna clasp Okay, back behind, which mine won't. Okay, but just the idea here that they're going to be like this, and, and you can imagine um, them touching. Okay, I don't want to compromise my joints just to get my hands to clasp. And a lot of the time, I don't even use a strap. I just 
let them be where they are. What's more significant to me is how we enter the position because I still want to keep my arm bones in the shoulder joints. And this is a position where it's really tempting, you know, because you're trying to get those hands to clasp and such, that we kind of pull things out of the joint. And then it's really questionable what are we actually stretching and how are we really benefiting? Okay. So the top arm, I actually, I usually get my um, bottom arm situated first. So I'm going to, this one will be my bottom arm. So the first thing I do is take it out to the sides and then I check in with the mobility. Okay. So what I need is the head of the arm bone to stay in the shoulder joint. Okay. Even though it's going to want to protrude forward. Okay. So I'll, I'll use my other hand to keep it back, keep the channel open around my neck, you know, feeling good. And then I'm going to internally rotate. As soon as you internally rotate, the shoulder is going to want to jet forward. So I really want to stay mindful here, even give myself a little extra assistance and then bending the elbow and bringing my hand back behind. So you'll feel, for most, most of you will feel this challenge of keeping the head of the arm bone grounded because it's gonna wanna really protrude forward, at least for me. So as I'm back here, and I'm, I'm gonna turn around just so you can see, okay? So I'm, still, so I'm always working, okay, on getting, keeping the head of the arm bone back, lengthening the spine, and for me here, because my bias is always to go into back bends, Okay, I have to really work to keep my bottom ribs back and lengthen my spine. Just like uh, all the other okay, variations in this position, okay, you could focus on just one arm. Okay, if you're adding the other one, okay, so one, the one arm, the, with the bottom arm, let's say, is in an internal rotation at the head of the arm bone shoulder joint relationship. Okay, the top arm is in an external rotation. Okay, so the palm is face up. Again, you want to monitor, right? You want to keep, so here it's ungrounded. Here I'm grounded, okay? So head of the arm bone grounded, lengthening the spine. I'm really drawing abs upward, okay? Reaching the arm, and for me, I want to keep that elbow pointing more forward and up, okay? And here the hands may or may not clasp, but this is where I'm working, okay? So that... I'm just, I'm getting a stretch, right, in the arms and the shoulders, but I'm not closing off the channel at the shoulder joints. And then you would carefully release and check in with the wrists, elbows, shoulders, spine, neck, okay? We'll go ahead and do the other side, and we are not symmetrical, okay? So we'll just kind of explore here and see, is one shoulder more receptive than the other? Again, placing support as you internally rotate, bending that elbow, okay? Keeping everything nice and again, so the joints are open, right? We want open channels for the flow of prana, for the breath to flow and for us to really optimize our benefits in the practice. The top arm is in an external rotation and we're getting the head of the arm bone snug in the joint. So we want to have um, secure, and open channels, and then reaching up, bending the elbow. It's gonna wanna go out to the side. That will unground the head of the arm bone. So I'm really trying to keep the head of the arm bone in the shoulder joint, lengthen. For me, okay, if you're going into that back bend, do this with me, bottom ribs back, and then grow taller. So this is the top half, right? The top half of the body in Gomukhasana. And then carefully release. So checking in and then potentially putting it all together, okay? So usually, and I don't, I don't think it really is critical, okay, but I, what my top leg, so right now I have my left leg on top, I'm gonna have my right arm, okay, so it's gonna, for me, it's gonna be the opposite. So my left leg's on top, my right arm's gonna be the top, leg, top arm, <laughs> okay? So just kinda, you can play with it, see if it really matters all that much. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Okay, but I think that this just helps me feel a little bit more balanced. I want to make sure if I'm adding that hinge, okay, to this position, that I don't feel, I don't want to increase any sense of feeling off kilter. Okay, so I want to feel really even. All right, so I'm rooting across my seat. 
I'm engaging, feeling the clear channels, my feet, knees, hips, coming up the length of the spine. This is my bottom arm. So I'm going to keep the head of the arm bone in the shoulder joint, okay? So everything matches as far as the theme. We're trying to keep those open and yet secure channels. Okay, lengthen the spine. This arm is in an external rotation, palm is facing up here, head of the arm bone back, lengthen. I don't even worry about my hands connecting. I'm just trying to find this length, maybe adding a hinge, not a round, okay? Still seeking space and length. And then coming up after some exploration, okay? Carefully releasing, checking in, okay? A fun, this is just a fun way to switch sides as long as it makes sense for your hips, knees, ankles, okay? Is to come forward, go around, Turn, 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 turn. <laughs> and the other knees on top. I don't know, it always just makes me laugh. Okay, so it's just kind of fun. If, right, this is the option that you're choosing. Okay, so now I have my right knee on top. My left arm will be the top arm. So I'm gonna do that second. Okay, so it's, again, I can't reiterate that enough. Okay, because we're going to want to take the shoulder forward and that really won't be um, good for anything, for the neck, for the shoulder, for the arm, okay? The front one, again, and then, so this one's internally rotating in the joint, this one's externally rotating, okay? Keeping those nice clear channels, staying upright, maybe hinging, okay? And then carefully, Releasing, releasing the arms, carefully releasing the legs, checking in, okay, with the joints, with your body, seeing if you can feel the benefits in the hips, in the shoulders, in the spine, okay? Gomukhasana, cow face pose, fantastic position, tons and tons of options, so really allow yourself to explore Okay, and each day finding that right um, variation, okay, that right combination for you and your body. I hope you have a wonderful day and that this was helpful, and I hope to hear from you soon. Namaste.